be live in a sec and we are live right hi guys welcome to the video um you'll have probably seen from the title i'm happy to say i have uh jewelry from the channel good use goods with me so do you want to say hi jury hey oh, guys oh the echo i've, I've messed that <laughs> There we go. <laughs> no How many times have I done that? I forget all the time too. <laughs> yeah. Hey guys. Good. Uh, I'm Jory. My channel is Good Use Goods. I'm over in uh, Canada in a cold winter right now, and uh, I sell a lot of electronics and video games, and sell on eBay, Etsy, Amazon, locally, wherever it makes me money. Fantastic. You just mentioned you're in Canada. Whereabouts in Canada are you? Uh, I'm in Ontario. I'm about. Two hours from Toronto would be the biggest city to me. So you're, that's the eastern end, sort of? Sort not? of, yeah. Yeah, sort of in the middle, but a little to the east, I guess. Okay. I have no real concept of places in Canada. I've never been. Well, no, I was in Canada very briefly. I went over the Niagara Falls Bridge and popped in and then came back just to get the stamp in my passport. <laughs> <laughs> For literally 10 minutes. <laughs> Niagara Falls isn't far either. I think I can do Niagara Falls in about three hours, probably. All oh, right. Yeah, that was an amazing place. Hang on, let me just turn this heater off. It's burning my legs. <laughs> so, so, yeah, we think it's cold here. How cold is it there at the minute? Uh, you guys are in Celsius. I don't have to convert it like I do for Americans. Um, it's probably like minus 15 out right now. Jeez. Wow. It's a little cold right now. Yeah, minus 15 and it's still snowing. It's been snowing for the last day and a half. Oh, good Lord. So you've got mm. a big, thick covering of snow there then? Yeah. Yeah, about... Uh, I don't know, like 30 centimeters of snow. Oh, my God. The UK would grind to a halt, literally, if that happened here. We get a couple of inches and everything goes to pot. It just goes chaos. We just get used to it. And then I live out in the country, too, so it's really bad out here because the plows come out less. They don't salt as much. You get all the wind blowing the snow across the road, so it, it can get pretty dicey out here. Yeah, I bet. Wow. That's, that's a whole other conversation. That's fascinating. But, <laughs> but we are here to talk reselling. So let me just dip in the chat. Um, let me go back to the beginning. Lots of people popping in. We've already got 70 viewers, which is fantastic. Uh, so a few quick hellos. We've got Peter in there, Tap Peddler, Stu Mandry, Chelsea. Hi, Alan. Lots of people. Heather, the Treasure Pirate. Let me get to the bottom. If you have any questions for Jury, um, please pop them in the chat. We'll try and get to those. It can be tricky watching the chat and having a conversation, but we'll we'll work on that, see if we can manage. Uh, yeah, I'm still say, trying to figure that one out. Oh, it's tough, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, people saying, wow, minus 15, that's cold. Yeah, people are shocked how cold it is there. It is cold. Yeah. Adam says, if that was the UK, it would be the end of days. <laughs> it hits minus 30 sometimes. We usually get a, a good stretch in the beginning of January. It's like minus 30, minus 35-ish with the wind. Good Lord. So how do you travel around in that? I mean, the roads must be gritted to some extent then. Yeah, they salt and sand the crap out of the roads here. You'll never find a vehicle over five years old without rust. It's just yeah. going to happen. It's inevitable here with all the salt we use. Yeah. Right. Let me catch up on the chat. Okay. Like I say, if you've got any questions, please feel free to pop them in. We'll try and get onto those. Um, so talking reselling. How does it work? Because I know we've we chatted in the past and we, we've sort of conversed on the six pack show. So I know a little bit about it. You are part time. Is that right? Because you have a job as well. Yeah, uh, my job is sort of part. I work Monday to Thursdays, just nine to five, like basically banker hours. And uh, it's at a storage place. So I run the storage place. There's no one else there. It's just me. Um, so it's kind of, it's, it's a busy job, but it leaves me a lot of time to list because at the storage, I'm allowed to list on eBay, Amazon. I got my storage unit set up there. So if something sells, Oh, excuse me, I'm already at work. Um, so it's, it's a pretty good gig. I'd probably have a hard time leaving this job, mm. even if I made enough income off eBay and Amazon to just quit the job because it's just, I have tons of freedom right now as it is anyways, discounted storage first try at auctions if they come up. Yeah. So what does your job involve? You're letting people in and out of units, you're selling units. Um, I'm just renting units. That's it. Uh, if you come in and set up for a storage unit, I fill out the paperwork, give you a key, give you a gate code. Other than that, people have their own gate code. It's all security cameras, 24 hour access. You could almost run it from your phone. And we're basically book solid too, which makes it even easier because people call and I want storage. And I go, well, we're book solid. So sorry, call elsewhere, I guess. Or go on a waiting list. Right. So you can li sit there and, and, and list and do your reselling from yeah. work. Yeah. Yeah. I only usually see like 
10 people a month at the storage. And they're the little old ladies that still pay in checks and write everything down in their bank book that they're paying for their storage. Other than that, people just have it pre-set up. It's just automatic payments, everything. So that is it. Well runs itself. Yeah. Knowing what I know now, I should have never became a mechanic. None of that. I should have just opened up a storage facility. Yeah. Great, well, honey. That's great. So reselling really ties in perfectly with that. Like you say, you've got storage there, so your stock's there, and then you can sit there getting paid by the hour. List. Yep. And then local meetups are easy. I don't care if people know show me because I just say, yeah, I'll be at this location from nine to five, nine to six sometimes. Yeah. And if they message, you, oh, I can't make it, uh, that's fine. It's no no time out of my day if you can't. So it's that nice. A great setup. You've mm -hmm. got it really good there because you've got the security from a from a nine to five that you know us full timers we don't have that security. We yeah. don't have a set income, so you've got that. And then any reselling is on top of your of your basic in income, so that's great. Yeah, it's been really good. It's been nice. And then, like I said, you got first crack at stuff. I have a lot of people come in. They try to rent something and. They go, I don't know what to do with all my son's stuff. He moved out two years ago and he's 30 and he left boxes of crap. And it's usually boxes of N64s and 90s toys. And so it works really well. I got a little sign and cards made up that say I buy, um, you know, just a list of stuff, video games, vintage electronics, toys, collectibles. And uh, a lot of people from the storage contact me on it. Some people don't even want anything for it. It's just junk that's taking up room in their storage and they're paying for it basically. Yeah, I've heard you mention in the past, you've got quite a lot of contacts that, that hook you up with electronics. Well, let's touch on that. What sort of stuff do you like to resell and, and how did you get into that side of it, the electronics? Uh, the electronics was almost by accident. I was looking for a huge old CRT TV because of the video game collection I have to play uh, light gun games and old school like Nintendo, Sega, stuff like that. And I got in contact with an e-waste guy and he just told me to kind of come by and grab a TV for free. And when I walked into his warehouse, it was just, it's like 4,000 square foot warehouse with just racks and racks of electronic waste. There's computer parts and video game consoles, old computers, new computers, laptops, TVs. And I just was like drooling at the mouth. And when you just get this stuff every day, he goes every day, can't keep up with it. And wow. he was showing me how much money he made from e-waste. And he was pulling like old IBM 486 computers, just complete some with the box. And he's like, yeah, these ones have a lot of gold. So after breaking one of those down, I'm like, well, what do you really get? Like $20 in precious metals? And he goes, yeah, about that. I'm like, I'll give you 50 for the computer. I'll turn around and sell it for 300 and you don't have to yeah. do any work. And he doesn't care that I make, you know, 60, 70% markup on it because he's nothing into it. He just, it's just money so in his why, pocket. Why does this guy not see that? the logical thing to do with the, the vintage computing is to put it on eBay. Is, or is that too much work for him? It's well, one, it's too much work for him Two, I don't think he realized that was something he could do. He's an older fella. He used to be a scrapper before. So he's just used to collecting junk and scrapping it. And he right. moved on to the whole e-waste thing. Cause it's really big here. And, uh, and he does make really good money off e-waste. Just, you need huge amounts like he does. Um, a lot of it gets boxed up and shipped overseas too. And then it's all disassembled there and turned into recycling. So to to handle e-waste, you need you need to be certified. You need to get that permission from the government there, or not? Uh, to break it down into precious metals, yes, because there's a lot of acids and stuff involved. But that doesn't stop a lot of these backyard guys from just trying to do it themselves and making little gold and silver bars out of the the CPUs and fingers on RAM. Um, but to do that, I'm pretty sure you need to be licensed to collect it. You don't. You can take it right into local scrapyards, and they'll pay you out per pound for circuit boards and things like that. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Some so, of it's broken too, though. Like you fix a lot of it. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to have an X, X amount of knowledge to deal with that. I mean, I watched recently you were, you, you were, you had a laptop that you were just given and then yeah. you <laughs> fixed that up and got it going. And I think to you, the way you were explaining it, that, that was like simple, but yeah, it was me, just a hard drive. Yeah. Just a hard drive. But you see to, to 90% of people, that's something that's beyond their capability. Well, and he probably went to a computer store. They told him, you know, $200 to fix it. It was $300 laptop brand new. So he just, well, I don't need this thing. Bought a computer off me and said, here, I was going to throw this in the e-waste bin. Do you want it? Because I dropped the computer off to him. He was just kind of being nice and threw me a laptop. And I said, yeah, I assumed it was going to be just destroyed. But no, it was, it was bad hard drive. So it was 15 minutes to put a new hard drive in. And then like half hour for Windows because Windows takes forever to install. And what do you think you'll get back on that on that free? Um, if I want to sell it same day, I could probably list it for like $75, $80 locally and probably sell it same day. Wow. I might sit on it at $140 on, on eBay or something like that. Cool. 
I just noticed in the chat, uh, Steve and Steph are in. They said, hi, Nick and Jory. Just wanted to say hi, Jory. Jory is an awesome guy. Got to watch the replay. A little busy right now. So they'll be watching it back. Very cool. Uh, Steve was, and Steph, how's it going? There was a question. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, Steve and Steph also say, take advantage of him. Ask questions. He's a super smart guy. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. If there it's go. tech stuff. Steve... Yeah, but that's that's an that's an area where a little bit of knowledge can be so helpful. I, I get by, but I know so little in comparison to some people. Luckily, I have a few very tech-minded people in my family, so I can go, "Oi, Darren," or or other people, and they can sort me out. But <laughs> fix this thing, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, Stephen Bennett had a question. Oh, hang on, the chat just jumped. Let me go back to it. Um, how long have you been reselling? And what are your favorite things to sell? Well, we kind of touched on that. But how long have you been flipping on the eBay? Uh, so like going hard at it to actually make money, probably only about three and a half years. It was three and a half years ago. I actually got a business license and started taking it serious. Um, but actually reselling, I don't know. Like as long as I can remember, I used to go around when I was a little, little kid at garage sales and people would give me free stuff because I was a little six year old kid. Like I like this toy. And I would load it all up in a basket and I would bike back to my house and I'd set up a little table on the end of my driveway and sell everything that people gave me free at the garage sales. And that, I wouldn't make much, it. but I'd get my, you know, my bag of candy and my, my can of Coke or something from the variety store. Or I'd have 20 bucks to go spend at Walmart. And again, people would buy stuff from me because they probably just little kids sitting out there trying to make some money. They felt bad. They didn't really care what they were buying. So, um, That's and then I got in, I got into eBay because of collecting video games, uh, I'd use it as more of an avenue to sell off doubles and extras and ones I didn't want. And then I'd use that money to buy more video games. I never really looked at it as a way to, to make money. Uh, I don't know why I just, I use it for a long time just to get things I wanted, go to garage sales, buy a couple of things, flip it and just keep the video games. And then one day kind of started watching YouTube channels like you, uh, bonafide, a bunch of other people. And I was like, Hey, it is actually, yeah. some money to be had in this and haven't really looked back since it's fascinating that you shared that little story of when you were a kid and you already <laughs> had that kind of mindset of i can make money here and it's fascinating how many of us resellers have that history of we were the guys you know flipping stuff at school we were the guys yeah. you know like when i used to when i got into computers i remember i bought a secondhand master system and then i kind of quickly got bored of that and moved on to the next thing but yeah. i sold it to my mate down the road he didn't have the money to buy it. So I set up a book where he was paying me five pounds a week for like six months for it or whatever. And I must have been 12 or something. And it's just in our blood. And it's fascinating that so many resellers, if you ask them when they were a kid, they already had that mindset. And I think, I don't know if you would agree, but it's some of it can't be taught. It's just there. That ability. It, it to is. See it's just see. sort of there. Yeah. A hundred percent agree. My old man used to restore and flip furniture too. So even growing up, I watched him on the side, always fixing things and selling them. And, uh, and then I became a mechanic and got in the automotive scene. And that's, there's a lot of shysty stuff in the automotive scene, but there's a, a hustle and scene right there with selling cars, selling car parts like you're now doing and yeah, being a mechanic. So Yeah. And I guess watching your dad do that, you would have been inspired so much by him. You know, you may not have realized it as a kid, but that would have yeah. been thinking in. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. Okay. Oh, Stu Mandy, Mandry's just subbed to you. That's cool. Yeah. There's well, a link you. in there's a link in the description uh, direct to uh, Good Use Goods, which is the name of the channel. So, yeah, pop over there uh, and check it out. Um, okay. All the questions are coming in about games. <laughs> we are going to get onto the games. <laughs> question from Peter Ray that perhaps we'll get in, onto in a bit. It says, what is your favorite games to play and sell? So we'll, we'll cover that in a bit when we get onto the games. Onto the actual video game part of it. Yeah. Yeah, I got some fun stuff sitting over here. Um, I was going to say you you have a, a young family. You've you've not long ago had a, had a baby. How how does your your wife view your reselling? Does she get involved? Uh she she kind of gets involved. She's more just supportive of she doesn't nag me when I stop at almost every thrift store and garage sale, regardless of where we're going. So yeah. she's really good that way. You know, we're late for this party, and I'm going, yeah, but this, this is a random garage sale in the middle of nowhere. We got to pull in, and so she puts up with a lot of that. And before the storage, I guess she used to put up with our house sort of being a outlet slash warehouse center, it would go through stages. There'd be days like I bought, I think 400 board games once. And that's how I got into Amazon. And uh, so she was good about it that we filled the living room with mountains of board games. And 
she does help. She actually helped me sort through all those and count pieces and wrap games. And it was time consuming. Um, but she doesn't like, she's not going out sourcing without me or selling on eBay or anything like that. Right. It, it's, it's so helpful that she, she understands and is supportive though. You can imagine it would be so much harder if, if your other half was, was against it. Wanted nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm lucky because Andrew obviously works alongside me, so she, mm -hmm. she gets the whole thing. She sometimes wonders if I'm taking it a bit too far, hence our whole last week. I think we were both at the point where it's, have we bit enough more than we can chew? I've spent literally the last three or four days just trying to find space for it all. <laughs> we didn't really want to take on storage. I did look at storage for this, but we haven't in the end. Was it mostly Hyundai parts? Yeah. It's all about Hyundai symbols and badges and stuff when you were... When you were taking yeah, stuff it out. was they were a, a Hyundai and Isuzu service, like a, an official service center. So it's 75%, maybe 80% Hyundai, and then a load of Isuzu truck parts, um, okay. which I think are going to be harder to sell, but there's good money in it, If but they'll be long tail. That's what I find with car parts. The rarer the part, kind of the more it's worth, but you'll sit on it longer. Mm. But like Hyundai, that's a common car. You should be able to move a lot of Hyundai parts pretty easily. There's Hopefully. a lot of people driving them. Yeah, around I'm... here, every other corner I turn, there's a Sonata or a um, whatever the Tucson or whatever the SUV is yeah, called. Tucson, and then there's the i10, i20, i30, which are quite popular in the UK, thankfully, because we've got shed loads of filters and oil filters and for all those models. So we we call yeah, them both... something else. What you just said, the the Hyundai names, we call them something else. They're a completely different car name here, and I'm trying to think of what they are. Same with your Ford Mondeo, we call a uh, Ford Fusion here. I really yeah yeah exact same car but you guys called a mondeo we call it a fusion um there are some other weird cars too you guys had different names for them yeah when we when we traveled in america we had a ford and it was called something else to what we knew it as i can't even remember what it was called <laughs> but yeah that happens a lot um, around europe they have different names yeah. with the models we have here it's weird and i always get jealous of your guys cars because almost every car we have here you guys have in a diesel form i don't know why we don't have diesel cars here the only diesel cars you can buy here are pretty well volkswagens and i'm not going to touch one of them <laughs> so, yeah. yeah my ford is a diesel my ford focus is a yeah diesel. so you can't get ford focus diesels i wish i could i'd drive a ford focus diesel every day if i could get one yeah and i'm a big ford fan so this thing is indestructible oh i bet <laughs> anyway we've gone off track here <laughs> um all right there were some questions um adam asks you with all this stuff you get offered have you become super choosy what you take or you just accept it all um it's hard to be choosy when someone brings you a whole box and they say here you go i don't really want to dig through and be like okay well i'll take this nintendo i don't want the rest of this crap just take mm -hmm. it back because they kind of get offended and they're like well no take all of it or none of it um but all the crap that i get that i can't sell i just donate it or i put into big lots and i just send them to job lots to auctions like i'll just throw in a bunch of books that are never going to sell there'll be penny books on amazon and i'll get 10 bucks for a box of 30 books on auction it's not a lot but it clears the stuff out um yeah. the e-waste guy i'm picky i'll go into his facility and i'll say i want this 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 how much money um but yeah, other people, if they're just bringing me stuff for next to free, I'm not too picky. If you're bringing me stuff to buy and you just bring me a selection, yeah, I'll pick through it. And get so how often there. are you um, going to this e-waste guy? Is that like on a weekly basis or most or not? Yeah, probably every other week. Right. Just because there's so much. There's more than I could ever even handle. It's ridiculous. I want to try and film one day, but he, he's weird about being on camera. Yeah, I'm sure. Do you know if other resellers have found that resource yet and are, and are using him? I don't know if anyone else is using him. If he's selling stuff from underneath me right now, um, I guess if he is, that's cool. But I give him fair prices, and he doesn't really know what the hell he's looking for. Like right. he has, he has no knowledge of electronics. He just knows it's waste, and there's money to be had in it. So even trying to explain to him, he still doesn't. He's like, I don't know. Just come down and look. Like if you see a 3D, O, he's like, I don't know what the hell that is. Come down and look. I'm like, I can show you a picture. I'm like, no, no, I don't got time to look at no damn pictures. He's like, you come down and look. And he's just. He's a, just an old fellow that's rough around the edges, and he's the guy that has 30 rusty cars parked in his backyard, too, and just yeah, yeah. junk everywhere. <laughs> wow. It just sounds like it's too good to be true. It sounds like a gold mine that, that wow. <laughs> I, almost, I almost fainted when I walked into his warehouse. I just kind of looked around, and I 
this is all your stuff? He goes, yep, yeah, yeah, we got 40 bins. And he goes once a day to all his bins in the city. And he says he easily fills up his 15 foot trailer once a day. So he gets it all for free. Yeah, because we have these little bins set up all over the city that say electronic waste yeah. drop off. Because you can't, well, the dump will take it now too. But for a long time, you couldn't take your e-waste to the dump. They wouldn't take your old computer or your old TV. So you could you could bypass him and do that yourself or not? I could, yeah. There's nothing to say I couldn't set up any bins. I have my own bin set up at the storage for e-waste and um, not really donation. I can't call it donation, but yeah, people drop stuff in there all the time. There's a guy, I can't remember which channel, I follow a few uh, scrappers because I find it's not something I've ever really done, but I find it fascinating. I mean, any any ways of making money for nothing yeah. I find interesting. And I follow one guy who who's just set up some bins around the back of some shops and another one here and there, and people just drop off stuff. And it's like fun. you, some he will just sell on as a as a computer or as an aircon air unit or whatever. Other stuff he's breaking down for parts, yeah. and other stuff he's taking to the scrapyard. So it's like, it just seems too good to be true. Yeah. Well, he'll tell you too, don't let it fool you. Like for all the good stuff he gets, there's thousands of just crap, like mm -hmm. 1980s wood grain TVs and old rusty washing machines and exploded microwaves and gross stoves. And he makes money off the scrap from it, but there's a ton of junk within that good stuff. Um, but he's starting to get contracts now. Like he did a university, he cleared out every single one of their computers. Right. all perfect working um the older imac computers where it's all built into the screen probably like 10 years old now but government funding they get new computers they get rid of all these old ones and uh he's been he cleared a couple of them out because even he knew there was still value on them um but it just they got rid of them the only stipulation was he had to destroy the hard drives just because of personal information wow that's awesome uh, another question here from graham nichols says so question hard drives spares and repairs or gold stripping have you ever got into trying to you mentioned it before about people who try and get the gold out of components have you ever got involved or not no i don't want to do it it's so much chemical and it's it's such little amount of gold for so much work um and then repairs like a hard drive like he was mentioning i won't even repair i'll just toss them if they don't work they're a dime a dozen around here you can get them super super cheap fair enough um let's see as I said before, guys, uh, we, we've got 120 people in, which is fantastic. Thanks for popping in. Cool. Oh, Krillin, Krillin sent a super chat. Krillin has super chatted. Um, Nick, you are a Yankees fan, question mark. No, uh, <laughs> I picked this cap up secondhand and it just fits me perfectly. I, I've got a weird shaped head. So finding a cap that's comfortable is hard. And I picked this one up. <laughs> I, I have no clue about the team at all. It was just a secondhand hat that fitted right. Um, Trade in that focus if you do more hauls. I have the Expedition. Expedition? What is that? Is that, that a... is a huge. That's built on a Ford F-350 truck platform, but it's an SUV. Oh, cool. That's a, and you can get them with a 7.3 diesel in them, too. That's a beast of an SUV. Yeah, that must have a different name here, I guess, because I've not heard of that. The Focus looks like a Mr. Bean car. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I had an old, and people got really mad at me. I had a Cosworth Focus. And no escort, Cosworth escort. Oh yeah. And I destroyed it. I used it as a rally car and I rolled it once. So that was the end of that. Oh wow. And people get so I didn't know how rare of a car it was when I bought it. I picked it up for eight hundred bucks and people still this day going, You can't even find a bumper for that car and I'm going, Oh geez. Yeah, there's a big following for that in the UK, mm -hmm. the Cosworth stuff. I found out after. I just we bought it for eight hundred bucks out of this guy's house and it was turboed in five speed and I'd never seen one before. And I said, This is too cool to pass up, so we bought it. And then and destroyed you it. Wow. yeah <laughs> did you injure yourself rolling it or no 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 i put her off the road a little too quick and she caught a wheel and it just kind of went sideways and then landed on the roof damn oh zahir's just super chatted as well uh zahir says epic to see jewelry so much tech knowledge yep people enjoying the chat let's see if there's any more questions uh as i said before if you just joined us um you got any questions please pop them in i will try and get to them um or oh, adam kelsey says sierra cosworth wow yeah lots of fans yeah the only right hand car drive i've ever owned too all oh, right oh okay everything else, yeah everything else left hand drive here um oh i was going to ask you a little bit about youtube how long have you been on youtube what got you involved in that and uh what are your plans moving forward as well with your channel uh i've been on youtube going on two years now 
Um, I think in like another three months, it'll be two years. And um, originally, I just started doing the videos, uh, partially because my wife was probably sick of hearing everything I found. And she didn't care that I found these amazing whatever board games and collectibles. So it was a cool place to share. And uh, I more or less started doing it because I wanted something to look back on and like maybe be able to show my son too. Like, hey, look at this is what your dad did back in the day. Uh, mm -hmm. And then it just kind of grew and people actually started watching and following and commenting. So the same thing like Larissa and I just kind of dived in head first after that and yeah, yeah, trying to make videos. It's hard with all the house rentals right now. Absolutely. That's cool. Um, okay. So we, we kind of mentioned uh, briefly at the beginning that we were going to talk about gaming. That's because you, I know you have a real passion for gaming, particularly retro gaming. Mm -hmm. um, so tell us a bit about that. What got you into it or were you into it back in the day? And this is kind of reliving your childhood. What's the story there? Uh, so on top of being a reseller as a kid, kind of, I was the weird kid that didn't open a lot of his toys and kept everything very neat and categorized. Um, so I just, I never got rid of a lot of the video games I had and I didn't realize it was a collection, uh, I don't know, till like six years ago. And it started accumulating into a fair amount of it. And then I just started collecting it. I just like it. It's not just video games. It's the whole tech part of it. Like I like taking apart the consoles, cleaning them up and stuff like that. And uh, the weirder, the better too. Like I like the really odd consoles and things people don't hear a lot about. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I just enjoy it. I enjoyed it as a kid my whole life too. I used to, I had the Nintendo was my first console. And then I got a Sega Genesis and that made me a Sega fanboy. And I just like, I oh, really for most of it. Nintendo, yeah. the NES. The original NES, yeah. 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 And then oh, my cousin Nintendo. had a master system. And I was like, this is so much cooler than the NES. <laughs> so then when the Genesis came out, my parents said, Do you want a Super Nintendo or Genesis? Well, no, I want a Sega now, because I used to love my cousin's master system way more than the NES. Oh, that's interesting. Because I said to you earlier that I, I did have a, a master system briefly, but then I got a black and white Nintendo, the classic absolutely fell in love with that and then in 92 i was queuing up day of release for the super nintendo and to this day that's not been bettered for me that is my all-time favorite console and i i never touched sega after yeah. that again <laughs> sega genesis was my was my favorite console wow they and were then, huge, uh, huge rivals here in the uk that the genesis oh, huge, well we call it the mega drive as i'm sure you know so yeah yeah, mega drive, yeah super nintendo were like at loggerheads for years it was big here too the battles and then it was the playstation xbox battle for a long time everyone going back and forth between that wow so so after that did you carry on gaming through sort of playstation xbox right up to current day yeah yeah i got a ps1 i was pretty young when i got a ps1 fell in love with rpgs and games like that from ps1 and then uh got a little shitty part-time job at a restaurant got myself a ps2 and then got an xbox too because i found out you could mod them and it's just i basically from playstation i got a ps2 then a ps3 uh then a ps4 so i've i've basically moved through the generations after the sega genesis i was the weird kid that got a saturn and and got a dreamcast too everyone right. had ps1s and i had the dreamcast which was i find an underrated console a lot of people rave about the dreamcast i oh, i don't think I've, I've owned them because i owned the gaming store for a while but i've never properly played on it to be honest i've played them just to test them and played like choo choo rocket just to check they yep. work <laughs> But never got into that. I mean, I went the route of PS1 uh, and N64, which I absolutely loved. And then I kind of drifted out of gaming um, as our business took off, and I just didn't have the spare time or energy to put into it. And then got back into gaming through the Nintendo Wii, strangely enough. And then I got the oh, Wii, really? and now I've got the Switch. But I don't game a lot anymore. It's really odd. I, can't, I don't know. It's... My, my, for, my big gaming time was the, the 90s for me. That's when for it was. how many games I own and stuff, I don't game nearly as much as justifiably owing all these stuff. I don't It's I'm maybe like a couple times a month now I can sit down for a half hour, an hour. And that's why I like the older games now because it's a lot easier for me to sit down for a half hour and play an old NES or Sega game than it is to sit down and play some like 300 hour yeah. long PlayStation 4 game or like the new Zelda game. I don't have time to play that game. I'll, I'll make it 20 minutes into it i know i've been i've got friends who are totally into the switch and they are in love with the zelda game i'm thinking if i buy that i won't be able to give it the time it deserves yeah it's it's huge i mean i'm struggling just to play mario kart a lot that's the only game i've got on it and it's amazing <laughs> but i've hardly touched it it's it's sad really as Zahir said um just a minute ago 
Uh, he says, yeah, Sega rock. Saturn had the sickest fighting games. Saturn yeah. did have a lot of good fighting games. I was going to say, well, I saw your, your other half walk through earlier. One thing that changes when you get a family and kids is, is your time and your priority shift. And I think that's what happened with yep. me. It really does. It Well, even the house rentals, they pretty well took a halt for the first three months when the, the baby first came because we just had to figure it all out. Yeah. Yeah, that's the point. You've been... What's the story with the house? You bought a house and you've just been... Or did you renovate the house? The house. Or just renovate? No, we bought a house that's... Um, it's it was built in 18... Uh, I don't know, like mid-1890s. We're not exactly sure of the date. And it wow. used to be a, a bank. So it has... Uh, safe vault in it still with the old vault door which we're turning into a wet bar should probably have a picture of it um that's amazing really we weren't even looking for a house yet really it was kind of a fluke and then uh this house popped up for dirt dirt cheap for i think it was 64 66 thousand we paid for the house um and it's two thousand square feet two floors uh nine foot ceilings in the basement and in here and it's a double yellow brick building but I had to, like the room I'm sitting in here, I had to frame out every single room, run electrical, insulation, drywall, uh, new plumbing. I had to put in the tub, shower, like everything. We had to sister all the joists in the basement. We had to support the floor from the basement. A lot has gone into it. Wow. That sounds amazing, man. So, so the actual safe with the safe door, what, is that like a full, like human-sized safe door you can walk in? Yep. Yeah, here, I'll pull a picture up of it on my phone here. Let's see if I got it. Um. There's not many the, people can say they've got a, a full-size safe in the basement. 32 inches of concrete with rebar and um, a two-inch thick uh, lead plate that slides down in between them. Crumbs. So when I was, I was talking to one of the safe people, because there's no way it's coming out of the house, he was basically like telling me how it's, it's a mini bomb shelter. It can take small arms and small explosives. It can even take bits of radiation because of the lead plating in it. So it's quite the setup. trying to see if i have a photo of the thing well, at least you've got somewhere to hide if trump you know well yeah that's what we'll go in the safe room i guess he kicks off world <laughs> war three and you... <laughs> you'll survive hopefully i was just reading some of the chat about um consoles there's some sony fans in there i never i'll be honest i never really got into sony i had a ps1 but that was about the time you know, I was kind of settling down and my, my focus wasn't on it. I never got I was, into two or three. I was probably like 15, I don't know, when I got a PS1? No, younger than that. When did PS1 come out? Like in 98, 96? Uh, here, it came out at the end of 94, coming into 95, actually. Okay, yeah, I was still pretty young when I got a PS1 because I was only born in 88 or 87. Jeez, I don't even know my own birthday. And uh, yeah, I forget you're a lot younger than me. Yeah, I'm only 30. Yeah. I'm, I'm too old. I'm 44. <laughs> <laughs> I love the PlayStation. I, I've gamed a lot on the PlayStation. Um, I think, I don't know. I think I just like it so much because kids born in the late eighties, early nineties, we were kind of born into that whole tech era. Yeah. Like I didn't have cell phones as a kid, but I remember getting our first computer and a guy had to come over and set the whole thing up and explain to us how it works and connected it to the internet. Kind of from there, I just became a technology person, I guess. Yeah. I love the fact that, our generation certainly saw it from the very beginning. I remember at school we had the first BBC microcomputer and like even the teachers had no clue how to work it. <laughs> and and then I had the first um, like home computers along the lines of the Sinclair Spectrum, that sort of stuff. And saw I got that. a Spectrum. Oh, yeah, that's so cool. That was my first love was the Sinclair Spectrum. Must have got it's that. It's really about, neat. About 87 maybe. I get, well, that was when you were born. <laughs> <laughs> So you said you, when we started chatting about this um, hangout, you said you might be able to bring up some of your uh, favorite pieces yeah. and some of your favorite games. Going back to Peter's question, what would you say is your favorite console and maybe favorite game? Let's just touch on that quick. Ooh, uh, ooh. favorite <laughs> consoles. Mm, it's a toss up probably between the Saturn and the PlayStation one. If I had to go between favorite console. Oh. Those are the two I put the most amount of time into playing, I think. Um, Saturn's an unusual choice. That really is. It is a bit of an odd choice. It had a lot of fun arcade ports, though. Um, and then, yeah, probably PlayStation 1, I would think, would be... That would probably be the top. Uh, 
favorite game? <laughs> That's a hard one. Uh, and favorite modern game was probably The Last of Us for the PlayStation 3. Still one of the best modern games I've ever played. That was like playing a movie. Uh, and probably old game, honestly, isn't a console game. We can get it on console, but it'd probably be Doom or Duke Nukem. All right. Yeah. Duke Nukem uh, 3D. I, I remember absolutely loving that game as a kid. Probably shouldn't have been playing it at that age, but I loved it on the computer. Excellent. So your collection now, are you buying stuff that you were into back in the day or are you trying to buy up rare games? How, how are you collecting these? Um, I actually downsized a bit of my collection. I only collect ones now that I want to play or just super, super kind of rare odd games just because they're cool to have on the shelf. Um, but I'm not like trying to complete anything. The only thing I'd maybe try and complete is a, a whole Saturn collection because there's not that many Saturn games. North no, American really, titles, anyway. Yeah, it had a really short time out, didn't it? Anyway, yeah, so, yeah I think it's like cool. six, six hundred games or something like that. Yeah, yeah. PlayStation Two is like nine thousand games or something crazy. So I'm not trying for all of them. Do you follow any of the channels where they're trying to get complete collections? Like, there's a guy in Canada, CJR. Do you follow that channel? I do. That's his crazy. His basement. That setup would put mine to shame. I have nowhere near a collection like that, man. Um, he's actually he's not too far from me. He's uh near Toronto, so he's probably two hours from yeah, me, I, I thought so yeah. yeah yeah so do you have anything to hand that you could share with us yeah yeah i, I can show you one of my rarer games yeah go for it just looking in the chat peter ray says uh for favorite console is the ps1 love the medieval one and two games i remember playing medieval that was a good game GTA, oh, the GTA was a top-down version on PS1. I remember that vividly. Gran Turismo 1 and 2, Tekken. Oh. Yeah, I remember, I remember being blown away by Tekken on the PS1 when that came out. That was a fine game on the PS1. It's the physics, uh, isn't it? Oh, it's just awesome. All right, what have you got? That's probably one of the most rare games I have. I don't Sega can... CD. Wow. Yeah, Earthworm Jim. Uh, it'll easy bring $300 Canadian. So it's, it's not as rare as your Atari game. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Where did you pick that one up? Uh, actually, I got this at a game store. We have a jumbo video here. They're a rental store. And what they were doing for a long time, they stopped doing it now, is they would give you, if you had decent games, 55 percent uh trade in value of whatever they're selling for on ebay which is a decent amount so what i was doing is i was picking up large lots of like playstation 2 games uh gamecube games xbox games because they're pretty cheap to buy you can usually get big lots of them for next to nothing hmm. and i was bringing these lots in to this jumbo video store and getting 55 percent of ebay value for trade in and i'm only a dollar into these games so they're giving me five ten thirty dollars a game and i was doing that and honestly just traded in shitty dollar games like $50 worth of games for $150 store credit and I would just be grabbing all their rare games every time I went in and then after a while they either stopped doing it or they just stopped doing it for me I'm not sure but they don't give you that value anymore they started to see you come in I bet well their, cool their shelves it. were getting bigger and bigger with kind of shitty games and I yeah. was just taking all the gems they had in the, the glass cases have you found that the sort of the cream of the collector's market games, like that game, for example, they're just getting head and the prices are going up and up beyond the rate of the average games. Like the rare stuff, because every it seems everyone's a game collector these days. And the rare oh, stuff like everyone's is shooting up. Even I see PlayStation 2 and Xbox prices climbing up now. I'm getting more for an Xbox console than I've ever gotten before. Like I can get $60, $75 a piece for an Xbox console on Amazon. What's that? The original Xbox. First? The original, yeah, the big fat Xbox. I think because modding got really big again for those, and I, the only reason I can think of it is just maybe nowadays with the technology and computers, it's just easier to mod. Maybe I'm not sure, or it's just that whole nostalgia thing. It's just hitting that point. Like Xbox and PlayStation Two came out when I was fifteen, sixteen. So I don't know if it's maybe just that. I, I would say that's more of what it is. Yeah. yeah, there's a generation that are just coming into the point where you know they got rid of theirs ten years ago, yeah. and they're suddenly thinking, "I want that back," and it's all moved on again. 
And it does it every time. Like right now, I'm buying up huge lots of PS3 and Xbox 360 games. Yeah. Just because they're dirt cheap and some of the games are, are worth a lot of money. Um, even today, they still are. But I, I see it going up a lot. And it's it's how I did it for PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2. It's how I did it for Sega CD, Sega Saturn. I just usually bought them when they were dead, when no one wanted them. Yeah. That's the wise way to do it. A few people, I'm way behind in the chat. Sorry, guys. A few people are chiming in with their favorite games. We've got N64, GoldenEye. I love that game. N64 Mario. Yeah, my my all-time favorite um, would have to be Super Mario World or even just Tetris on the Game Boy Black and White. I put so many hours into that. I just I do like the Tetris. Yeah, I, I find N64 is my favorite multiplayer system. If you got a couple buddies over and you want to play a multiplayer game, it's almost always the N64 that gets grabbed out here because it's just gold nice fun. Mario Kart's fun. You play battles. Super Smash Bros. is fun. Yeah. So. Um. Sorry, I was just catching up in the chat. Um, Final Fantasy VII, I see. That's a good game. Those are the games I don't have time to play anymore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as a question, we'll quickly cover that one. Uh, what games would be a long time, long-term bet to be stored away later for resale? I got perfect games to show you for that. So if you guys never heard of this website, there's a website called uh, Limited Run Games. Yeah. And they started off, if you guys can YouTube or Google the history, but they started off as just a couple guys... Uh, making reprints of really old games or games that were uh, download only on the PlayStation store. There is no physical media. And somehow this little company got the go ahead from Sony and Sony prints and produces the games from them, but they'll do it in limited runs anywhere from 1500 to like 3000 games are released. Uh, and they let you know when it's coming out and they sell up quick to the point where if you can buy them, you can literally turn around and sell them on eBay and make a quick $20 profit off them. But like, they look like this. I don't know. These are all limited run games. That one's still sealed um and a lot of them are retro like they did uh i don't know if you remember the night trap game it's a pretty rare game uh yeah. it was on pc 3do live action weird thing wasn't it yeah and it had a lot of people didn't like the game because back then people were sensitive a girl gets dragged out uh by like vampires or something like that or you stalk this girl so it it was bad because, because so it, was, it was basically banned for that which nowadays is like laughable if you play grand theft auto 5 or something like that <laughs> yeah. but it was banned for that so they released it on ps4 in a limited edition box it looks like the original box um trying to find an old one too but so they'll release like that's a bit of an older game see it's got the sort of 8-bit graphics tech to it now i saw you chatting about these in a recent video and i, I was going to look into it but i didn't um do you know if that if that is only a, a north american thing or are they doing they ship version? worldwide Right. And PlayStation 4 is region free, so oh, you can play PAL. Yeah. yeah, yeah, my bad. Yeah, excellent. I'm going to look into that because that's, like you say, a, a quick way to make some money if you can get in there soon enough. And it's Yeah, a- it, it goes pretty quick. They'll usually do it on a Saturday. They do it twice a month, I think. They'll run a sale. And it's a genius idea from them because they're astute that they know there's a lot of collectors now who will want to have the complete PS4 collection. And if they, if everyone knows they're being released in limited numbers, they're just going to sell out instantly every, no matter every what time. the game is, aren't they? Well, and they, I mean, when you buy the games, they send you these little collector cards too. It says limited run on the back and they'll send you coupons so you can save money, which it's just a little gimmick, but collectors eat it up, right? Yeah. yeah. They, they are the valuable stuff of the future. And everybody knows it. It's like collecting games has come so far from when I was dabbling in it in the nineties. It's like, so many more it's, it's mainstream now it used to be well, a geeky pursuit yeah I was, I was kind of a nerd for playing duke nukem on my computer and stuff and starcraft and my friends would find it cool but they'd be like oh, you're like the gaming nerd now it's everyone games exactly. even if you're just playing on your phone a little game that's technically still a game so have you got any other cool bits you can share with us i have so much stuff it's ridiculous uh actually i got a cool recent pick up i'm a big i stopped collecting carts i'll only buy a cart now if they're sealed or not sealed sorry but complete in box i just got little protectors on them there you go there's some mario 3 actually this is funny somebody at some point i don't know if the camera picked this up bought this at zeller's for two dollars wow bargain i know i don't know when they probably in the 90s um yeah it's I, actually 
I can screen share you guys what my game room looked like at the old house before we moved because I don't have really much of a game room right now. Yeah, that sounds perfect. Have a go at that. I'm going to catch up in the chat quick. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, hopefully, will you take this? That answered your question uh, about what going to be a long term investment to store away those limited run ones for sure mm -hmm. to be honest anything that has any sort of following i mean we've all seen the rise of the crash bandicoot games recently and yeah. the spyro games but you can think of any anything current even that has a big following if you can buy them up now cheap put them away and that's what people will be after like the big ones now they're not even technically rare games but it's what everyone wants like the mario Kart, the smash bros can you guys see that i don't know if it's loaded yeah, up I've or just, not i've just like um held it on you so we can see that oh okay. that's a small corner of it i got a bunch of pictures though there's some of the consoles oh there's your systems right excellent oh you got the crystal xbox down there yeah i do yeah and the black one underneath both are modded both have one terabyte hard drives in them and have xbmc on it so i can load games right on it and play emulators and or play roms right off it I think the, the American or Canadian uh, SNES just looks so ugly. I don't know why they changed the design of it to be all boxy. And the purple, I, purple I hate it. so awful. The UK and Jap one is that lovely molded sort of rounded. Mm -hmm. oh, just... I run everything through that, which is a super rare switch box. It converts stuff to S-Video and it has like, I don't know, eight or nine inputs. I spent a long time um, basically running everything through the highest quality cable in the best way I could without, well, that's a huge game haul from a while ago. Oh, um, <laughs> wow. that, was, that was one of the first times I ever went to the e-waste guy. That's from the e-waste guy? Oh yeah, my that's God. From the e -waste guy. And he yeah. doesn't know the value of that stuff. No, I, I paid uh, $15 a piece for the N64s. I paid $5 a piece for the Nintendos. No. Uh, I paid five a piece for the Segas and I paid 15 a piece for the game cubes. Um, and the cards, games. I mean, there's a poke, isn't that the poke? Yeah. Game, yeah, there's a couple Pokemon ones there. There's uh, uh, Majora's Mask there. There's Porcarina of Time. Uh, have, Mario that, Party 2 and 3 was there. That is worth a fortune to you. You must know that. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was that was one of the best halls. Like, even the crates down below, there's so many controllers. And and the, and the Millennium Falcons, he had there. Yeah, the top one's a new one from, like, 03. The bottom one is uh, from 78. So the bottom one sold really fast. Oh my god! And people are giving this stuff away to him. Yeah, people just throw this stuff in the e-waste. Some of it's not even e-waste. I assume because that Millennium Falcon took batteries and lit up, someone assumed it was basically electronic. I'm finding <laughs> it hard to get my head around that. That is just amazing to me. Yeah, let's <laughs> close a picture of it for you. Wow. Yeah, that, I mean that Pokemon Stadium car over here. That's I don't know, fifty quid, something like that. Jeez. yeah it's a little less around here uh i found out the pal version for some reason is more rare um there's more consoles so wow and that's not everything that's out uh like i also have a 3do um a turbo graphics that's not out i have a coleco vision uh i have a commodore 64 i have a vic 20 i do have a zx spectrum um i have an old sinclair computer I even have a Amstrad 2 PC that runs some weird version of DOS. And that TV, uh, was that a Commodore TV that you showed? Uh, it was a Commodore 1702 monitor. So it goes with the uh, um, Commodore C64. The only reason I have that monitor is the front just has composite. The back has your uh, Chroma Luma, which is basically S-Video, but it's split. And that TV is the best quality monitor you can get without getting into like the Sony BVM and PVM broadcast monitors. And I'm not paying a thousand dollars for a Sony broadcast monitor. It's insane what those things sell for. Well, I bet that that Commodore one's worth a, a fair bit anyway, surely. Yeah. I'm really good just shape. I see them hundred bucks or so, $150. Oh, I thought it'd be more just for the fact that it's a Commodore branded TV, but wow. Let's see what's going on in the chat. quick. Oh, Krillin super chatted another two two dollars. Uh, he says, "Did you have Neo Geo? We used we used to love Samurai Showdown. I've never played on a Neo Geo. That is such a hard game. I that's one of the few things I don't have. I don't have a Neo Geo. I had a Neo Geo Pocket. Did that come out in Canada? The little handheld? No, it didn't. It did they're not. Great. Um, they're really good. Oh, they're really cool." Can you still see me? My screen seems to be blank for some reason. Uh, no, I can hear you, but there's just a frozen face of you. 
Yeah, why is my... I wonder if I'm frozen. <laughs> Good old Google Hangouts sometimes. Let us know in the chat, because whenever it switches to me, it's just a blank screen now. What can you guys see? I might have to go out and come back in. Or, oh, I don't think I can do that, because I'm like... Uh, I don't know if you can or not. I I got kicked out of mine once when I was hosting, and it didn't shut down. I was able to get back in. <laughs> just, I, I don't know why, because Google Hangouts, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, people are saying blank screen, Nick. Why is huh. that my, my webcam is still on? It's still working. Well, it's on. <laughs> Shall I try and come out and go back in? Yeah, if you want. I can I can keep these guys. I'll answer some questions. Right. Let's see if this works. If this all goes pear-shaped, it's been great. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm going to log out and try and log back okay. in. Right. Bear with. Dave Roland. Oh, you have four variants of the, the Commodore monitors. That's really cool. I only I have two of the 1702 monitors. I don't have any of the other ones. I've been looking for them, but having a Sega or Nintendo hooked up to them, those monitors are amazing looking. Really, really like them. I think I've made it work. Oh no, still black. It, still it gives black? me the option oh. to end broadcast. Yeah, I have no. It won't let me just come out. It says end, the only options are end broadcast, or, and if I click continue broadcast, I stay as I am. Did you? You didn't disable the camera at the top, did you? At the no, I've done that accidentally. I don't know what I've done. Black belt on Sega Mega Drive is good. Never played that game. I find Europe gets a, and you guys like the Power Region gets some games that we don't get here, and they name them differently too sometimes. Right, what I've done is I've just uh, highlighted it on you, so it's going to stay on you, and people can cool. hear me. They're <laughs> gonna have to put up with my face, which is probably a good thing. <laughs> um, okay. Well, we've been on nearly an hour, I think. Oh, no, about 45, so that's cool. We'll just take a few questions and uh, and wrap this up at some point. Oh, okay. like that, Joe. I can bring them on for a sec if you want. Come here, Evan. He doesn't seem to be too fussy. Hi there. Oh, bear. Hi. People probably want to see a baby more than me anyways, too. <laughs> oh, my word. What's his name? Evan. Evan. Hello, Evan. Hello. Hi, buddy. <laughs> He's trying to get the microphone. I don't know what it is about the mic, but every time he sees it, he wants to grab it and chew on it. Absolutely. Oh, my God. He's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever get your hands on full-size arcade machines? No, I wish. Oh, back, in the, back in the early 2000s, um, when arcade machines weren't really sought after, I really fancied just started buying some up, and I had opportunities to buy some. And it's, I don't regret things in life, but that I regret. I could have got my hands on cheap arcade machines. I wish I had the space for it. I don't. And I kicked myself. I had the chance to buy, um, oh my God, I can't even think of it. Oh, it's a Jurassic Park game. You like sit in a seat and you shoot dinosaurs and stuff. Yeah. Was that an auction? I had no way of moving it. And it went for like $225. I couldn't believe it, which is dirt for what these things sell for. Empty cases sell for a couple hundred dollars here. Yeah, well, there's a huge scene. I follow a few channels where guys pick them up cheap and restore them. I love watching those. It's so cool. It's, it's really neat. There, There's some wiring if you want to restore one of those. I've seen a lot of people just build computers now, and they make like a main arcade cabinet, which is kind of neat. There's a there's a question coming. Let's let's tackle that, and then we'll we'll wrap this up, because <laughs> the technology is failing, and nobody can see me for a start. Not, <laughs> not, not that that's a bad thing. Um, Stephen Bennett asks, uh, asks you, what? was the most expensive thing you've sold on eBay? Uh, the most expensive thing I sold, I actually bought um, accidentally as it, well, there's two things. The first thing is most recent. It was a Singer 222K sewing machine and it sold for $1,500 US. Um, and I had it listed for two grand. I took an offer. Where did you? And it came out of, yeah, it was really cool. Came out of a storage unit. So I paid next to nothing for it. I already had made my money by that point. Um, and then the best, one of the best sales I ever had, I bought a, 1930s uh tn japan tin robot he had like flashlights and stuff and he lit up and moved around i bought him for 10 cents at a garage sale when i was like seven or eight years old and my old man took it away from me and he didn't give it back to me until i was about 17 and uh it was another like 1500 dollars sale and i sold it when ebay was still big doing no auctions way. and stuff like that yeah Your dad was wise then so he didn't let you destroy it as a kid yeah i was so mad when he took it from me too i could still remember it but 
I forgave him once he gave it to me and I was 17 and I looked up the value of it. Cause I guess even back then it was worth, you know, four or $500. So, yeah. And it sold for what? 1500. Did you say? Yeah. It, it also sold for about 50. It was 15 or 1600. It was probably six years ago. I, I sold it. I bought a car with it. Cause we, I blew the motor in an old Cavalier I was driving. So sold that on eBay and bought a car. That's awesome. So you turned the tiny tin robot into a car. Yeah. That's I love that. It's part of the reason I like all these video games too. I mean, I don't want to sell them, but heaven forbid if something happens and I need a little bit of extra cash, yeah. it's it's almost the same as having cash on me. I can take it like I, there's games there that sell same day. Absolutely. Yeah, they have a pretty much fixed value and you can you can get yeah. that in from me. I mean, yeah, you, seeds, um, what's the most you've spent on a single game for your collection? Uh, Even if it's trade-in value, what's the most? Without doing trade-in value? Mm, I spent... I spent 65 on this game. It's Mario RPG. Oh, yeah. The seven stars, which is almost retail. Like, it sells for about $100 Canadian online now. But I really wanted it. It's one of the few games I don't have in the box because I told myself to keep my collection down. If it's not in the box or doesn't have the cart, I don't want it because um, it was just getting out of hand. I had too much stuff. <laughs> okay. I'm just... Oh, Lonnie's in. Hi, Lonnie. Oh, hey, Lonnie. Let me just see if my screen's working again. No, I'm still black. <laughs> <laughs> We're I having problems, Google, Lonnie. <laughs> a Google Hangouts thing. Okay. Well, should we wrap this up here? We can always do another chat another time. We can go into more depth with your collection or something, but I love that. That was so cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm down to have a video game chat almost any time, so I, I'd gladly come on again. Yeah, see my... someone mentioning that Chainsaw PS2 controller. Um, I'm pretty sure it's a PS3 controller and it was for Resident Evil and it's worth a lot of money. Yeah, I've seen people selling those. Yeah. Mm. Stupid controller. I don't know how you'd ever use it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I'm sorry we had tech issues towards the end, but you know, these things happen. Um, it just reminds me to say if you haven't checked out Julie's channel, there is a link below. Go over there and check that out. You do all sorts of videos. Like I say recently you were showing you know doing up that laptop and flipping that there's all sorts of content over there so go and check joey's channel out thanks so much for joining me mate appreciate that yeah thanks for having me on it was fun Say Fantastic. Bye, and thanks for everyone in the chat we've still got over 100 viewers so if you enjoyed Very the cool. content please give us a thumbs up and see you later he's waving almost <laughs> almost <laughs> bye guys take care mate bye